Georgia. Smack bang in the middle of the Caucasus, its intimidating landscape and rugged terrain make it a pretty attractive destination for adventure. Now, I had cycled there once before in 2015, but that time I'd taken a much more direct route through the country, missing out on some of the more striking areas that this part of the world had to offer. Which is exactly why Ashola and I recently packed up our trusty tandem bicycle and flew out there. Our aim? Explore the region properly by escaping the busy roads and taking a downright wiggly route into the hills and beyond. Oh, oh, so, oh, so, so buckle up as we bring you with us on what was a challenging but thoroughly thrilling tandem tour across the breathtaking country of Georgia. We don't know where we're going, but we're just following this lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got to try and navigate our way around this lake because it's not obvious where the road is. Another bloody puncture, isn't it? <laughs> That's four punctures in three days. Camera <laughs> job. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN app and browser extension that enables you to connect to the internet through a different country. This allows you to unblock websites and content that you ordinarily wouldn't be able to access. I've used Surfshark for a good couple of years now, and I can honestly say that it's become invaluable to me when traveling. Not only does it give peace of mind that the connection I'm making to the Wi-Fi of that super dodgy hostel is secure, but when I'm out of the country, simply by selecting a UK-based IP address, I avoid all the hassle of dealing with the extra security checks that always seem to pop up when my email wrongly freaks out, assuming that someone in the middle of Georgia, for example, has just logged into my account. Additionally, they're the only VPN to offer the use of one account on an unlimited number of devices. So if you're on the market for a fast, reliable VPN, please consider Surfshark. And by using my code EDPRATT, you'll receive 83% off with an extra three months for free. And if you decide, actually, this isn't for me, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to trying it out today. Thank you, Surfshark, for continuing to support this channel. Now on with the video. Yeah, tell me, what are you planning to do? We're going to try our best today to get this long boy into two bike boxes. We need to turn handlebars around, break it in two, pack it in the boxes in a way that it's not going to get damaged by the airlines because they have a habit of just slinging stuff around, don't they? <laughs> Flying with bikes is always stressful, but the best thing I've found to avoid damage is just to take time to dismantle and pack them as securely as possible. Yeah, that's solid, isn't it? Yeah. With the tandem bubble wrapped to within an inch of its life, we set about fitting all of our other camping gubbins around it. Pans and the fuel bottle. No, that's good, I like it. Yeah, well done. Good. The next morning at 2am, we loaded the boxes into the car and mum drove us out to Heathrow. <laughs> I feel so little. <laughs> I feel so big. <laughs> I won't pick you up. <laughs> no, no, he's picked me up before pulled a muscle. <laughs> oh. Thankfully, we made it through the airport system without too much hassle. This is what the tire face looks like. <laughs> and just as we settled down in our seats, Outside the window, it was reassuring to see that our oversized boxes were actually making it onto the plane. 
past his half an hour. Now we had two flights, and around eight hours ahead of us, before the inevitable madness that would be arriving in Georgia's capital, Tbilisi. It's like one room, but like well divided, doesn't it? So you've got like the kitchen and then you've got kind of like a, what do you call it, like a mezzanine with the bed and then plenty of space yeah. for, where are and they? Bicycles or bike? The best part, so many tables mm -hmm. and so many chairs. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? But the bikes look like they survived. We haven't yeah, opened the boxes yet. That'll be tomorrow's excitement, I think. Like, I don't oh. think I could be bothered to do that tonight. Yeah, you like it? Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> the Airbnb we were staying at was located in the west of the city, in a district called Sabotello. Including utilities, it cost $400 a month, and we planned to stay there for a month or two while we edited videos from our previous tandem tour and to prepare for our upcoming ride across Georgia. The local rules at the time meant that we needed to receive a PCR test within two days of arriving. So the next morning, we headed out in search of a clinic. You looking forward to riding the bike on these roads? Not yet. <laughs> no, it's going to be a nightmare, isn't it? I've forgotten how busy it was in Tbilisi. It's... And it's so hot as well. It's really, really hot and humid. <laughs> Thank you. You're Sorry. Yeah, I'm looking forward to breaking into the bike boxes and finding our clothes because all I have is jeans. <laughs> and I have all these leggings and everything's black. The air conditioning is what you need. Oh. So, aim of the day is to unpack these two boxes and put the, the tandem back together. Hey! <laughs> it survived! This was Nick from me by the TSA in the States when I arrived in America. So this one survived, hopefully this, oh yeah. And the stove as well. Because I think the reason it was nicked is because they found like a trace amount of petrol on it. Um, and this one, yeah, it still smells a little bit of petrol. There's yeah. nothing much you can do about that. Did you that. wash it with like soap? I did, yeah. but you can never get totally rid of the smell. Yeah? Yeah, looks good. Oh my God, so just a lot of stuff. That's some clothes. It's not that heavy. It's not, yeah. Shall I take the ball? You should just be able to yank them off. Yeah. yeah. As we set about reassembling the bike, we were relieved to see that our excessive packaging had done the trick. You can do this bit you <laughs> Well done. Yay, well done. Uh, these are spare spokes. Probably, hopefully, not gonna need them. But there's about six spokes in here, so if wheels start destroying themselves, at least we can replace them. Uh, but it's not something I want to be like strapping to the bike anywhere or putting in a bag uh, because we're just not going to need, we're going to need these very, very rarely. So I had a thought that I would put them inside one of the frames and I think this one is the most accessible in your handlebars, I shall. So this goes in there and then this string is still here so if we do need it we can pull them back out just so it doesn't get totally lost in there and then you can just tuck that in there 
Yeah. And now the spokes are in there, but they're out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, to properly check that the tandem was in complete working order, we need to take it out for a quick test ride. All right, you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Let's do it. Yeah. We'll stop here and just watch what's going on. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Good. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. <laughs> See how we do on the streets of Tbilisi, eh? <laughs> Careful. Right. Yeah, she wasn't looking, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no, we have to be very careful with people yeah, here. Just people. Stop here. So it's basically that hill that we're going up, but we're going further. Yeah. So we continue on this road. Yeah. No warning on that, it just goes green. Yeah. 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 Hey, bike feels good though. Feels yeah. smooth. Definitely gonna get some looks. <laughs> people hey, it's like cool to though. Fast. <laughs> So we're heading to a place called Lake Lissi, um, which is very close to where we are in Sabotalo, where we're staying. And it looks like it's got a cycle path around it, which, uh, which we're going to check out. It seems like quite a good place for a first kind of test ride. I don't really fancy going right into the middle of town right at the moment. No. <laughs> uh, we'll... it, yeah, I guess we have to just know the roads as well better. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't know which road is. Yeah, I don't know. We'll get more confident, yeah. but I think for now we'll just yeah. just do some smaller smaller rides. We'll definitely get more looks here than we than we yeah. did in the UK. But in the UK, people used to know what it is, yeah. so they would like, oh, tandem. Here, <laughs> people would be like, what is that? <laughs> okay, we can scoot through that gap. We're a bit wider with can the camera. We? Yeah. Oh, because yeah, we're fine. Oh. Okay, this one. Indicate right, please. Yeah. Try and avoid that. Drop. Oh, I see Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna feel it. I mean, it doesn't look too, too, the hill doesn't look too, too high. Oh I'll, my God. I'll down gear. All right, gear. Oh. Okay, gear one. Let's just take it easy up here. Great job. So we're going up? No, going down. Wow, we're gonna be at the city. <laughs> That's beautiful. Look at that. So cool. The only riding we'd ever done on this tandem was in the UK, cycling on the left hand side of the road. So far, switching our brains to pedaling on the right hadn't been an issue. Can you, not yet, indicate left now? Yeah. But we'd soon encounter our first real cognitive test. A roundabout. Wait, shit, he gives way to us, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Gosh, my brain. <laughs> <laughs> my brain. Yeah. That's all right. After the excitement of navigating Georgian traffic, we eventually reached Lake Lissy. Located up on the hills to the west of the city, it had a two mile cycle path looping its perimeter, which made much more pleasant riding. Oh, that's cool. That's good, huh? Oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. That's yeah. really cool. <laughs> People wearing masks. He was riding in a mask. Well, oh. I took my mask. Did you take your mask? I didn't, actually. Oh, no, OK. Oh, wait, wait, shit. There's a one-way system. How so? I just saw an arrow. Let's do it, you know. We're... OK, wait. Wait, stop. Sorry, you right? Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, I just saw the arrow up there. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter, you know. It's, it's quite big. And there is a beach. That's the beach, isn't it? Yeah. At this point, we'd pretty much learnt just one word in Georgian. Gamajoba, which means hello. Now, our vocab might have been limited, but that wasn't going to stop us from greeting people. <laughs> Gamajoba. 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 <laughs> that guy. That look. <laughs> that that looks like, what? <laughs> all in all, it was a very successful first ride, and after the exertion and the heat, we made it back with one thing on our minds. Food. So we headed out, on foot this time, in search of something to eat. While we were tempted by the hanging chorchella, 
a traditional sweet consisting of nuts dipped in grape juice. We were in the mood for something a little bit more substantial, so settled on a small bakery offering pastry type things. As an ex-Soviet state, as well as Georgian, Russian is also widely spoken in the country. This was helpful because while my Russian is frankly pretty dire, Aishola, having grown up in Kyrgyzstan, spoke it fluently. Uh, 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 That's a plastic bag for the yeah. product. Let's yeah. go sit in the park, shall we? Quite very chill dog, dude. It's just absolutely conked out, isn't he? It's like Lobiani is like a bean pie. Uh, it's made with the yeast dough and they just take a lot of beans, they smush them and put a lot of spices in it and just make a pie. Wow, this one is ridiculously delicious. Mm. Oh yeah. It's a huge one, this one, isn't it? Yeah. It's enough for like two people. We probably should have come. Maybe one <laughs> between us. Yeah. Oh well. It was fantastic having the bike back together, and we look forward to loading it back up and heading off on our tour across the country. But first, we had a job to do. Edit and release the Southwest Coast video series we'd shot back in the UK. And with over 50 hours of footage, cutting that down was going to be no small task. I am working uh, when we found a campsite where they didn't have a toilet and I caught you several times peeing in the hedge. What is this, huh? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I was so happy to leave early in the morning because I really needed a pee. <laughs> All right, so I've got to the point in the edit where I need to start recording little bits of voiceover. But I don't have a recording booth here. Not that I've ever had a recording booth. It's always been makeshifts. But over the years, I've kind of worked out how to do it. I need to find a bunch of blankets and any kind of pillows that are in this apartment. I've identified that little cubby hole with the books. Okay, so this, is, this is kind of what we've got going on here. I've got my Rode Video Micro. Um, that mic is sitting on top of the GoPro. So it's only there just because, yeah, it's just a stand that I can put it. That mic then pushes out to my little Zoom recorder, which then sends the recording through into the computer. And that's where I'm uh, recording the stuff and that goes into Audacity. And then I throw that into Final Cut when I, when I need to work with the audio. But that's basically it. It's a bit makeshift, but I think it will work. And then in terms of recording uh, like lines, I've got all that on my phone. Um, so I can kind of just hold it here and uh, record. <coughs> Officially, the southwest coast stretches from Minehead in Somerset, through Devon, down into Cornwall, swings past Land's End, heads back into Devon, and terminates at Pool Harbour in Dorset. Ooh, run out of air. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try and breathe in between, maybe. Officially, the southwest coast stretches from Minehead in Somerset, through Devon, down into Cornwall, swings past Land's End. Over the next few weeks, we continued to edit hard crafting the story of our UK ride. But it wasn't all work, because in between editing sessions, we also headed out to explore more of what Tbilisi had to offer. Oh, it's too hot. <laughs> Most of the time, we took the old metro system, riding its impressively long escalators, some of which measured over 100 metres in length. The train's going to be here in like 13 seconds. 11 seconds, 10, 9. That's going from that direction. At half a Georgian Larry, or about 12 pence per journey, it was certainly a cheap and convenient way of getting around, but its tracks were definitely some of the loudest and most rickety we'd ever travelled on.
Ending up in a clothes market just outside of Station Square one day, we spotted some socks with a design so appalling it would have been a crime not to buy them. Yeah, that's a win if ever I saw one. <laughs> right, um... You have some unique <laughs> COVID-19 socks. Show them to me again. Yeah. If you can believe it, at this point, we've been in Tbilisi for two whole months. Editing the UK Town of series had been one challenging project and taken a lot more time than we'd anticipated. But it was relieving to know that we were now on the finishing straight with only a few lines of voiceover left to record <clears throat> and a couple of pickup shots left to film. We were now almost ready to leave and set off on our tandem tour across Georgia. But before we left the city, there was one last thing we wanted to do. The Caucasus Cycling Network is, as the name suggests, a cycling group based in Tbilisi. Each month, they meet up for a mass group ride. So we pop down to the meeting point to join in. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, let's do it. <laughs> God, it's kind of mad, isn't it? Yeah. It's always a blast cruising through cities as one large body, and riding with CCN was no exception. Yeah, you really can take over with a big group, can't you? Yes. The group was friendly and very accommodating, making sure that no one got left behind. The destination at the end of the ride was a place called Turtle Lake. It was supposedly a very popular spot with great views of the city. The only issue was, it was up a pretty sizeable climb. Good training for the future mountain passes would face, I guess. After a speedy loop around the lake, the group began to disperse. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> but just before we went our separate ways, it was time to reap the reward of the climb we'd just sweated up. And what a reward that turned out to be. Yay! Wow, look at that view! Ha <laughs> ha! Careful! I'm being very careful. Oh my. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bollocks. I see you, I see you. We got it. Ah. Wow, we climbed up this. We did really well. Oh. Woo -hoo! <laughs> and with that exceptional downhill, our time in Tbilisi had come to a close. We'd had an extremely enjoyable time in the capital, but the reason we'd come to Georgia in the first place was to ride our tandem across it. And by golly, after more hours than we could count sitting in front of computers editing videos, we were itching more than ever to load up the bike and get back on the road. Thank you very much for watching this first instalment, and please do join us next time as we begin this new adventure and finally get rolling into the spectacular Georgian mountains. See ya. Hello there, and thank you very much for watching the first episode of our cycle touring series across Georgia. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's, yeah, just taking a lot of work to get this thing ready for to, for release and um, yeah it's just very exciting to finally get the stuff out there um, if you wanted to watch the whole series right now then you can on Vimeo it's the whole series uploads to Vimeo all nine episodes just under four hours long so if you've been struggling finding stuff on Netflix or whatever whatever subscription service you might be signed up to and you're scrolling and scrolling and you don't know what to watch well maybe give our tandem cycle touring series a go because I'm, I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Um, so you can watch that over on Vimeo. The whole thing is available right now. Another bit of admin. <laughs> um, I will be stopping the Patreon read at the end of the videos. I've, I've done, I've read the names out of the top tier supporters on Patreon for the last two years now. Um, and I just feel like I want a bit of a change. So I will be stopping that at the end of episode two. Uh, but the good news is that if you always wanted me to read your name out at the end of the episodes, then you've still got time because I will be doing that, yeah, at the end of episode two. The cutoff for that will be the 9th of August. So just in a few days time, 
So thank you very much, Almas Kengis, Brad Allen Armstrong, Brett St. Pierre, Buzz Covington, Christopher Jansons, Craig Piper, Elijah Legenda, Gaia de Navarra, Gary Hull, Ian Crawford, Jerry Borchard, Jordan Pilling, Joseph and Rebecca Chivers, Michael and Jen Wolfendale, Neil Brooks, Philip Merritt, Sharon Chong, Stephen Jones, Tony and Kiki, Warren Snyder, and Wolfie. Thank you very much for your support. If you would like me to read your name out at the end of episode two, then please sign up over on the Patreon. Uh, you can do that right now. And uh, I'll see you next time for the next installment of our cycle touring series across Georgia. Thank you very much. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>